Let's look at the basic functions of the Singer Studio Silver Reed family of ribbers. The one that I'm demonstrating on today is an SRP 50, one of the older ones, works great, and it is attached to my SK740, a much newer punch card machine, but the combo works nicely. In order to knit, we need to understand a few settings. The manual has them, but it's not always in the easiest format to understand, so let's take a look. On the ribber, a lever in number one position means that the machine will knit going in that direction. This one's on the left, so this machine will knit going left. But it will slip going right because that lever is in the zero position. Both sides will go to both positions and we use that to our advantage. The main carriage has the same settings, but they look different. With the selector dial set for stockinette, the carriage will knit every row no matter what the side levers are set on. But when we change to the slip position, the back or triangle position will mean that the machine knits going in the direction that that side of the carriage is, and it will slip in the dot position. Knit, slip, knit, slip, always in tandem with the slip setting on the dial. By combining these settings properly, we can cast on, knit normal ribbing, full needle ribbing, and tubular knitting. I'll be demonstrating with two different yarns very suitable to this machine combo. The gray is Tam 3-ply, also called Astrakrill, soft and exactly the right weight to knit well in stockinette and normal one-by-one -one ribbing on this machine. The pink is Tam Estelio. It is considerably thinner and the machine likes it much better for full needle rib than it likes the gray. You'll see that shortly. We'll also make use of the P setting, which opposes the needles perfectly. They would hit if all of them came out at the same time and the H setting, in which they will alternate if they all come out at the exact same time. You won't always be able to see that I'm changing from P to H or exactly what I'm doing on the carriage, so I will tell you that and you can refer back to these things while you watch the knitting progress. Let's start with one by one ribbing, also known as knit one, purl one ribbing, the most commonly used kind of ribbing for cuffs and hems. Use the P setting, bring forth every other needle on each bed, set them so they are alternating, and run the carriage back and forth a couple of times to make sure they're all in working position properly. Set both stitch tiles to zero or one, thread the yarn, and knit across slowly, and you should have what we call the zigzag row. That's because the yarn has zigzagged from needle to needle back and forth across the beds. If you have one missed needle, as I did, you can fix it. If you have more, you should stop and redo it. Something is wrong. My one, I think, is just due to a needle that I should replace shortly. Remove the wire from the cast-on comb. The river cast-on comb looks like this. Put one hand under the bed holding the comb with the teeth pointing upward and work those teeth through the zigzag row without snagging any yarn then reinsert the wire in those little holes across the top of the comb. Hang a river weight, and you've got to learn to feel how much your machine likes in terms of weight on the comb, centering the weight. Now we want to knit to the right on the back bed and towards the left on the front bed, and in order to get the back bed to do what we want, we have to move to the slip position along with the triangle setting on the right and the dot setting on the left. On the river bed, the levers should be set like this so that it will slip going right and knit going left. And the net result will be a tube of knitting. We only really need two tubular rows and that's what I knit, but some manuals say to do three and that's okay and many knitters like that too. Now we want both beds to return to knitting each row, so one one on the ribber, 
stock and net settings on the main bed. Also, it's time to turn up to the ribbing stitch size, which is between three and four for my ribber main bed combination. You will find that even amongst the same model, individual machines vary. And there we are. Now, with everybody knitting stock in it, as far as they know, we're getting ribbing. Just knit as much of it as you want. Your choice of stitch size will also vary a little bit based on what you're doing. I tend to like my wrist cuffs tighter than any other ribbing on the garment, for example. In case you were wondering why stockinette settings produce ribbing, it's because each bed is doing the same thing, just knitting stitches. But each bed is facing the opposite direction. So it's as though the main bed were creating knits and the ribber was creating pearls. Even though they only really do the same thing as each other, their opposition causes this to happen. Now, if we bring every needle into work on both beds and change to swing P so that even though every needle is in work, they will still alternate and not crash into each other, we get what's known as full needle rib, a very dense fabric. It is wonderful for making completely reversible garments that do not roll at all. And it, this rib is tight enough, it actually resembles stocking it on both sides. Unfortunately, the TAM 3-ply is a little bit thick for this machine combination to be happy with. It successfully did knit, but it dropped more stitches than it should, and it was rather stiff, and it generally made me understand that it did not want to do full needle rib in this yarn. So at the end of the movie, I'll show you a yarn it does like. If you want to do full needle rib, plan on swatching for half an hour or so. Don't cut that step short, because finding the exactly right stitch size and yarn is the key. Now let's try some tubular knitting. Basically, this is the same as what we did while casting on. Side levers plus the dial setting on the front bed. One lever on zero, one lever on one on the river bed. I should mention that either bed may be set to knit and to slip in either direction. So I'm showing you one of two possible setups. But here we're knitting a tube of stockinette, so the selected stitch size should be appropriate to stockinette. For this yarn on this machine, six to seven works for me. If every needle is in work on both beds and you just switch to tubular settings, you will get a tube, but there's a better way to do it. Since I was working full needle rib, I was on swing H. Switching to swing P will make a tube with nicer edges. In swing P, sometimes there's a little bump where the knitting turns the corner going from one bed to the next. In swing H, if your beds are properly distanced from one another, the needles as you cross the bed are the same distance as the needles beside those needles if that made any sense. So you get a tube that looks completely continuous. You cannot tell where the edges were. Since we use this technique a great deal for socks, that's a wonderful thing. You want the sock to look the same all the way around. Now I've changed to the Estilio yarn and am returning to full needle rib settings, and you'll see how nicely that works. It is typical that full needle rib requires a thinner yarn than normal ribbing or stockinette. Estilio is probably two-thirds the thickness of Astrakrill. Here's what we have knitted. The bottom, knit one purl, one ribbing. Very nice and even. Next, the gray part of the full needle rib with a dropped stitch or two. The first little bit of tubular where I did not adjust the swing and the second part where I did, so you cannot see the transition at the edge. And the pink full needle rib at the end of the swatch. There's much more you can do with your ribber, but with these basic skills in hand, you can do a great deal. Let's talk a little bit about lateral adjustment. The goal is that when swing is set to P, the needles alternate and pass each other easily. Needles on one bed should oppose the gate pegs on the other bed. 
when you shift from P to H, half pitch, the needle should move and those on one band should exactly be centered on the space between the needles on the other bed. You can see it's not perfectly true here, so we need to adjust a little. On the SRP50, we found two minor adjustments are possible. Here's one, and here's the other. This is a very minor adjustment. The screw is either slotted or cross point. I found the slot easier to get in there. You loosen it and then it has a little bit of movement from left to right. Bear in mind, this is also the alignment for your number indicator on the front. So this and the two on the top seem to have done it. Let me reiterate that the majority of the adjustment is done with the assembly of that racking lever and its drive that you see me working around right here. So it's best done when you have that apart. You look at what you're doing, you get it lined up from there, and then these small, tiny, less than a millimeter adjustments are available to you also. Now what we're going to adjust is the special brackets that go into the main bed that the river goes into. If you'll notice, I loosen these screws and there's a little bit of movement, again, around a millimeter, left to right. And I started on the left where I could get a good view of how the gate pegs were lining up did the one on the left and then did the one on the right. And this seems to have been the amount of alignment that we needed. So you've got two places with a very small amount of alignment you can make from left to right. But in this case, that seems to have been perfectly adequate. Let's hope it also works for you if you need it.